Johnny, do you want to go to an ice cream social? Yeah, I'd love to. Great, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to bring up our next performer. She is a stand-up comedian. Uh, she, I forget where she's from. I bet she'll tell us. <laughs> Put your hands together for Carolyn Albert, everybody! Carolyn Albert! Is it on? Okay, hi. Uh, I'm from Minneapolis right now. I've been there for about a year, but I've lived in a bunch of places, so that's what we're going with. Uh, I love Craigslist, but there's a lot of weird stuff on there. Um, a year ago, my place was broken into, and my laptop was stolen, and five days later, I found my stolen laptop for sale on Craigslist. So I called the police, and the property crimes department was closed for a three-day weekend because of Columbus Day. And I thought, you know, like, how often does the government actually get it right? But I can't think of a better way to celebrate Columbus's memory than a free-for-all on property crime. <laughs> I went to school for aviation, and now I'm really skeptical of anything the airlines tell me. <laughs> so I was waiting for a flight. And the plane had come in, everybody had gotten off, and then there was a long delay before he started boarding. One of the gate agents explained that a passenger had gotten sick on the inbound flight and they had to clean it up. And I thought, why would they tell us that? Because now everyone's thinking, oh, it was definitely my seat. You got like phantom vomit smell, everybody's like totally grossed out. I'm like, why didn't they just tell us there was a mechanical problem? <laughs> and then I thought, I bet there was a mechanical problem. <laughs> They're like, just tell everyone someone threw up and no one will notice the guy changing the engine. <laughs> then when we were inbound to land, uh, the co-pilot made an announcement that after we landed, there'd be fire trucks on both sides of the runway that would spray the plane with water. Don't be alarmed, it's a tradition, because the pilot's retiring and that's a thing that they do. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this plane's definitely on fire. McDonald's has a sign that says, over 99 billion served. Current population of the world is less than 8 billion. McDonald's has been around for about four generations, 8 times 4, 32. We're still at about a third. So either they're counting the squirrels and raccoons in the dumpsters, <laughs> or they've set up a service plaza in the Sea of Tranquility, and they have a nice little monopoly going on up there. They have boardwalk, park place, they're tearing down houses and building hotels. Yay! Uh, a couple years ago, I'd just gotten dumped, and this guy that I knew said he wanted to get to know me better. So we made plans to go rock climbing, and I show up, and it's me, him, and his ex-girlfriend. And uh, so after a while, she leaves, and he and I get to talking, and it turns out that they had actually gotten back together, and they were doing this, like, open relationship polyamory thing. She actually left to go meet up with his other girlfriend. So I'm thinking... If she puts in a good word, I might have a chance with this guy. <laughs> Gonna call my mom and tell her I found the one. A lot of guys say women are really controlling in relationships. And I think they're right. I mean, like, one abortion and all of a sudden she thinks she can make you wear a condom during the three most fertile days of her cycle? I was raised Catholic, and when I was a kid, I had this conversation with my mom. I said, I think I want to be a priest when I grow up. And she said, well, only men are allowed to be priests. Well, who makes that rule? The Pope. When do we get a new Pope? When the Pope dies. Hmm, that might be a while. Uh, can we change his mind? Yeah, probably not. He's pretty old. Oh, yeah? How old? Yeah, 70. Oh, maybe, maybe he won't last that long. Well, actually, Popes live a long time because they don't really have to do anything. Huh. Well, what if I kill the Pope? <laughs> they probably won't let you be a priest if I kill the Pope. So now I'm an atheist. <laughs> I'm also uh, not a priest, and that Pope is no longer alive. Uh, coincidence? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, I got a fortune cookie the other day, and on the back of the fortune, it has a learn Chinese one word at a time. And the word was moreover. 
I thought, I don't know anyone who uses the word moreover. And furthermore, if you're trying to finish your Mandarin novel using only the words you find on the back of fortune cookies, you're probably going to die of MSG poisoning before you get there. <laughs> so I have one more for you guys, and then I'll let, keep the show going. Uh, a friend of mine posted a link to an article. said, uh, Black Lives Matter plans protest at Twin Cities Marathon. And the plan was that they were going to block the finish line and prevent people from completing the race. And there were thousands of runners that were going to be affected by this. They'd been training for a long time. It was like a big personal goal. Some even planned to use their time to well, excuse me. Some even planned to use their finishing time to qualify for the Boston Marathon. And I can totally relate because 14 years ago I ran a half marathon. Uh, I guess I didn't really run it. It took me like three hours and 47 minutes. But I paid the money and I got the T-shirt and the number across my chest. And I went to the pasta dinner the night before where somebody talked me into signing a petition for a smoking ban. And if you know anything about my politics, that's really impressive. Uh, so, and I get to say that I finished the race and all these real athletes won't get to because of the protest, but I get it. You know, if you want to make a statement, you have to stop traffic. You have to disrupt people's lives or they're not going to pay attention to you. But the first thing that I thought when I saw the headline was, shit, there's going to be a marathon in town. All the roads are going to be closed. You won't be able to go anywhere. So maybe Black Lives Matter should just have a marathon. Yeah, thank you. You guys have been great. Carol and Albert, everybody! Good stuff. Oh, you did so good. You love part. it. You think it's so well, funny. He's, he's getting sweet anal relief. It's <laughs> not my tongue.